Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the shop. It's fantastic to have you here today. Oh no, wait a minute. Not you. Uh, it's Granddad's Forge. Welcome. It is my personal experience and belief that blacksmithing can actually save a life. And that is what today's video is about. It's been a long time coming. Uh, the other day, I saw a video by uh, Roy and Jess Adams about uh, done is better than perfect. So this ain't going to be a perfect video, but I urge you strongly, stick with it, watch to the very end, and uh, see what my point is about how blacksmithing specifically uh, can be sort of different from many other things that are good for you. Uh, many other, uh, I guess you could call them hobbies, trades, crafts. Uh, there are many out there that are very beneficial psychologically. But my point today is to show you specifically how, where I come from, uh, how I feel is black blacksmithing is extremely unique in one special way. What I call the secret psychology to uh, blacksmithing. Uh, disclaimer, yeah, I'm just a, I'm just a guy in a garage, okay? Um, it doesn't take a certified meteorologist to tell you the weather's beautiful. It doesn't take a certified engineer to tell you that that building looks a little unsafe to go into. And I'm sure most of you who have been into, involved with the, uh, uh, mental health industry in, in America is it's a shambles. Uh, for one thing, you have a lot of people who are certified professionals who aren't worth a dang. They just mean well. And then you have a huge amount of certified professionals who are awesome at their job, but the industry is so screwed up, their hands are tied to actually get anything done. Uh, Yet, people are still finding help in those areas, and I strongly suggest anyone uh, uh, suffering from any issues before I get started here today, uh, the, the blacksmithing is not a substitute for professional help. Uh, but my opinion is just my opinion. So, uh, let's go on this little journey. We're going to start from a broad general ex uh, explanation as to why I feel Blacksmithing is good, which can apply to many, uh, many trades or craftsmanships, down to specifically why I think there's this little secret going on on top of this anvil that sets it apart from everything else. So, come along, let's talk about it. But first, I've got to tell you, this ain't my idea. When Jason of HOJ Forge started forging it forward, on Facebook. It opened up a whole lot of new thinking to me. I mean, I had been in, in, interested in blacksmithing and had been dabbling in it, uh, and I was just starting to take it very serious when the group formed. And the one thing, besides the spirit of forging it forward, I found that everyone was so awesome blacksmith community is respectful of one another, uh, they're helpful for one another, they love sharing their knowledge, but even more so, I found an overwhelming amount of you guys out there, you girls, who have baggage just like we all do, that I've seen so many comments about how this has really helped you with PTSD, or this has really helped you with uh, all kinds of stress. Or, as for me, me personally, uh, March 15th of this year, which was right after Forging It Forward was formed, uh, a, a little bit after, uh, it was my one year anniversary of stopping drinking. And uh, it was sort of a milestone for me. And then I started running into other people who have used uh, blacksmithing to help them 
that it has helped them in, in their, uh, their quest to be sober. Then I met some people locally, same stories. Then I hooked up with a local blacksmithing group, uh, Williams Grove Steam Engine Society decided, decided they were going to start some blacksmithing. And the, the guy that uh, was in charge of everything, first thing out of his mouth was, I want people to understand there's more to blacksmithing than just making stuff out of metal. And he proceeded to tell me his story about how blacksmithing has helped him through some severe trials in his life. And I kept running into this everywhere I went. Then you guys started sharing stories, and it just went from there. So, here's what I want you to do. Very, very important, okay? I want you to share your story down below in the comments section. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, <laughs> please do that. Uh, but seriously, share your story about how blacksmithing has changed your life to the good because of the psychological benefits that you've experienced without even realizing they were going to happen. Uh, also, feel free to contact me directly, granddads with a Z, granddadsforge, all one word, at gmail.com. I'll do what I can to help you get started in blacksmithing basically point you in the right direction. And if you have any other deep questions, I'll do my best to point you in the right direction. Uh, so please stay tuned. Uh, we're about to get started. This, like I said, this may be one of the most important uh, blacksmithing videos that any rookie guy has ever made. So thank you. Okay, so here's where we start. Basically, you're looking at uh, any pastime, any hobby, any trade that you're trying to break into is beneficial. I mean, come on, let's face it. Anything that you get enjoyment from, that gets your your mind uh, in a relaxation mode, leisure look mode, that is healthy for you. It's very, very healthy. Then, of course, there's the next level is we all inside us have this need to create. Well, that opens up whenever you're doing what you're created to do, which is to be a creator also, is when, you, when you're in that zone, when you're, when you're doing what you were made to do, that release in and of itself is really an amazing benefit to your psychological well-being. And it's dang fun. I mean, think about it. This, this whole subject could stop right dead here. If we just discuss about how uh, music has saved people's lives because of how it changed them, or how art of any kind, pottery, um, any kind of expression. Uh, and then there's the, the making level. When you get from creating down to making, to actually take something and physically produce something that's going to last. Uh, that also is, it's not only the creation aspect that's healthy, but now all of a sudden you have that sense of self-satisfaction, that, that self-reward, that instant, instant feedback. You, you can look at something. And again, that's another layer of this onion of health to your brain. Uh, many people find, uh, rewarding careers in their hobbies, uh, woodworking, uh, even painting and stuff. Some people can make a living at that, but basically physically making something and making in general is awesome. And again, we can stop the conversation right there, but now let's get a little bit deeper into a little more specific things you might find in blacksmithing. Well, the next level, is aggression or physical, you know, physical output. That is very good for mental abilities too, and to the mental abilities to refresh itself or to heal itself or whatever. Um, again, you could be talking about running, racquetball, kayaking, 
uh, anything that you do physically uh, can be both addicting and beneficial. Uh, it makes you feel wonderful when you've had a good workout or going for a long hike or anything like that. And the act of, of the physical hammering in blacksmithing, again, another layer of the onion that's beneficial to you. Now let's go a little bit deeper now. You ready? Okay, now the actual act of coming down and beating on something with the hammer. Everybody will tell you that that's awesome. To get rid of aggression, uh, to, to uh, let your frustrations out, or to just, you know, just that, that, that primal instinct, the swing from up to down, holding something in your hand. I mean, I'm, I know this isn't real, but do you remember uh, Space Odyssey? Uh, way back when the monkeys were sitting around that monolith and the one discovers that uh, he has power because he, he sees a, a, a bone and it breaks a skull and he gets the idea that he can, you know, protect his family at the watering hole. Uh, it's that aggression, that aggression. Now, obviously, violence can be bad, but come on, we're human beings. It's inside us all. And to exercise that aggression of slamming down on something is extremely healthy. But we're still not yet at the secret behind blacksmithing. And I think I should fire up the forge so I can explain it to you better. Uh, first of all, the next layer is with anything. I mean, you start a campfire, right? Uh, what happens? Everybody gathers around it. Even in the hot summer night, people don't mind the heat coming off of there. And of course, in the wintertime, it's welcoming. And that in and of itself, that light, that heat, the I feel that there's something psychologically deeper about the colors of the fire. Uh, the, the yellows, the oranges, the reds, uh, sometimes the whites, uh, is extremely beneficial psychological to calming us, to attract, it attracts us for some reason. And again, I'm not a psychologist, but you have that added benefit, yet stacked on all these layers that I'm talking about. But that's still not the secret I'm talking about. So... Let me fire up the forge and show you what I'm talking about. First of all, what does metal represent to you and to me? Subconsciously and real. It's hard. We can't manipulate it. What do we use it for? We use it for good things and bad things. First of all, to me, metal represents the final word. Good or bad, evil or good, it doesn't matter. It's the final word. They make swords out of this stuff. Bullets, guns, bombs, planes, handcuffs, jail cells. All those things are made out of metal. But then there's the, the good side of it too. Whatever you want to rely on something, you want it to be metal. You get ticked off if you buy something that's got plastic parts in it. Metal is strong. Metal, bridges, cars, even the knives we cook with, the pots and pans we use, metal. We rely on it because it is strong. It doesn't care who you are, what your agenda is, it has the final word. Now think about something. What does that represent in your personal life? Things that you can't change, things that have the final word against your world. I think that can bring a lot of issues in our lives. Think about it. People suffering. PTSD, people struggling with depression, emotional issues, 
substance abuse, alcoholism, drug use, and just the regular trials of life, being a single mom, um, there are a million reasons why, if you haven't discovered life's today, maybe you should, because I'm allowed to get to the point here. Metal is, represents the things that drive us nuts. If you think about it, what makes us, makes us so crazy sometimes is the fact that we can't do crap about the stuff that goes wrong in our lives. But thankfully, we can't do crap about the things that go right in our lives uh, in spite of ourselves. But that psychological connection is what I'm talking about. Whenever you're banging on metal, yeah, there's that aggression that I told you about. There's the physical act of swinging downwards with something in your head. I talked about that. When you get metal hot enough, you can make it move. You can bend it to your will. You turn it into what you want it to. You take a hunk of metal. Now, all of a sudden, you have the final word. And that, I believe, is to see the psychological connection that you can make a difference. And in some circumstances, you can take the impossible and make it yours. You can take the impossible and make it happen. And I really believe, with all my heart, that that transfers deep down psychologically into your personal life. When you're banging away, you don't think of nothing. You're completely free. Don't you hate it? Don't you just hate it when people tell you to just, oh, just clear your mind. Just don't think about that stuff. Don't you just want to slap those people? And guess what? When you're doing this, you don't think about nothing else. It's those moments in time when you're a master of something normally has the final word and now all of a sudden it doesn't. When you're the master, you're in charge. It's those moments that God can speak to you. It's those moments that that person that gave you good advice, but they didn't deliver it properly or they're kind of a jerk and you don't like them. They gave you good advice. It's times like that
my big announcement. Are you ready? Okay. I've had, recently, a series of catastrophes one way after the other, and it got me to thinking, you know, I may not be able to make a living at what I'm doing now, which is driving truck, which pays really well, golden handcuffs, uh, and I may need to start thinking about my retirement, and I've always wanted, I've always been jealous of those guys that say, you do what you love, do a profession that you love. Well, I am in love with blacksmithing, I could do this uh, the rest of my life and be happy. Uh, problem is, I got a lot to learn. So, I've got some bills, just like the rest of y'all, and I also have a uh, really stressful situation involving my dad where my finances are prioritized towards that and uh, regular old household bills. But, you know, the motto of my channel is, if you thunk it, now you gotta make it. Well, I done thunk it and now I gotta make it to Sofas Quad State 2018. Why do I want to go? Several reasons. First of all, I get to meet a bunch of you guys that I talk to almost every day, and yet I've never met you in person. I will get a chance to shake your hand and actually spend time with you. That's going to be awesome. Secondly, oh my gosh, come on. All the demos, all the uh, classes and instruction and uh, examples. I mean, I am going to suck in so much information that is going to help me. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unimaginable. Thirdly, uh, I want to somehow give back to the community or forging it forward spirit where find somebody that's in worse shape than I am and try to maybe be a blessing to them somehow. So here's the rules, how I'm going to get there. I cannot accept any financial donations whatsoever. I have to, and I cannot use any of my own personal money whatsoever. I can only raise the money through blacksmithing. Well, I have never sold anything in my life, so that's gonna be a challenge. But for right now, I just need to get to making stuff. And so I'm trying to tool up right now. I'm trying to get, uh, basically get my tooling set so I can just start slamming away. Uh, the amount of money I think I need to raise is I'm, I'm guessing less than $400 will do it. And I have from now to the end of September to do it. Um, considering the odds, that's pretty impossible. But I love those odds. I think I can pull something off here. What do I think I need money for? Well, first of all, the forging it forward thing. I'm assuming I need about 100 bucks cash because I'm going to run into somebody that needs a hammer or needs something, or maybe I can just take some of the things that I've made along. I, I, I want to have some extra money where I can be a blessing to somebody, uh, even if it's just buying somebody a hot dog or something. Uh, the second thing is uh, expenses. Uh, I'm probably, the plan is to go out with two other guys right here in Harrisburg, um, travel with them, and of course, gas, motor expenses, uh, wear and tear on his car, or on his vehicle, uh, helping the people who are help uh, putting us up, or uh, we're gonna be camping in someone's property, and we need some extra hospitality cash for that. And then, of course, I think the, the, the whole event is around 65 bucks for the three days. And then there's just logistics, food and supplies that I'm going to need just for daily living for three days. Um, so, like I said, I, rough guesstimate, I need less than 400 bucks. So, basically, from you, 
uh, yeah, I have tons of ideas of what I'm going to make and sell. Roy Adams and Jess, Jess specifically, wrote a uh, blacksmith cheat sheet, an excellent PDF format. I encourage you to get it. Tells you how to price your stuff that you're making. And when I was reading that, I was surprised because uh, someone once said, I, I think John Switzer had a teacher or someone, maybe it was Whitaker, Francis Whitaker said that one of the worst things you could do is uh, that would send you to hell as a blacksmith would be not charging enough for your, <laughs> for your work. Uh, so that cheat sheet will come in very, very handy. And I've got tons of ideas already, but again, in the comments below, please leave any suggestions of uh, good money-making things. Uh, I do not want charity. I do need help selling this stuff. For those of you who are local, family, and friends, I'm going to need help selling this stuff, whether it's uh, on your Etsy shop or most likely if you, have, if you or someone you know has a booth somewhere or, you know, at a flea market, I'll need help with that. And, uh, and those of you, family and friends, who may buy some of my stuff, I have two requests. First of all, no charity. Don't give me 50 bucks for a bottle opener, okay? But likewise, just because we're family and friends, don't screw me and ask, try to lowball me. I just, I'm going to suggest the market uh, going right for something, and that's what I need. So I'm going to dig in, and let's see if I can make this thing happen. And like I said before, remember, if you funk it, now you got to make it. Have a good day.